Okay, in this video lecture we are going to uh, see how a modular multiplicative inverse can be calculated using an extended Euclid algorithm. Um, extended Euclid comes in different variants. Uh, the one that we will uh, discuss here is the Blankenship variant, which um, is probably the, the easiest one to use and to understand. Um, the specific example that we will look at is uh, uh, find the inverse of 171 modulo 1933. Um, another way to write that is uh, use the power minus 1. So inverse can be written mathematically as uh, 171 to the power minus 1, uh, like this. And um, yeah, actually what we have to do in order to find the inverse is uh, to find some value x such that if we multiply 171 with x, we get 1. And that's the definition of inverse. And the inverse of 171 is a value that if we multiply these two, we get 1. So then x is the inverse, so that's the value that we are looking for. Um, we are going to do that with the blanking ship algorithm. Uh, when we do that, we start with uh, the same kind of table that we used for Euclid, but we add some. Uh, we add one column on the right over here, and we add uh, two rows in the beginning. And um, well, what we do, what we start with, is we write that uh, 1933 is uh, zero times 171 plus one time 1933. It's very obvious. Nothing deep behind this, just a very uh, simple equality. And we do the same for the other value, 171. That's 1 times 171 plus 0 times uh, 1933. Um, in this column, what we will continue to do is uh, write uh, a value here as a combination of 171 and 1933. So we start with the values themselves. Um, so this, the, the coefficients are simply 0 and 1, here 1 and 0. But when we continue, it will become a bit more complicated. Uh, these are the two uh, values. So this is the modulo. This is the value that we want to have the inverse from. And um, yeah, we will perform the Euclid algorithm. But um, yeah, since this is an extended Euclid, we will also do some extra steps. Well, the first step in the Euclid algorithm is uh, to see how often you can subtract the smaller value from the bigger value. So how often can we uh, subtract 171 from 1933? And if you think about it, that's going to be 11. Uh, we can subtract 171 11 times from 1933. Um, and if we do that, we have uh, 52 left. If we, if we would use uh, 12 here, we would have a negative value. If we would use uh, 10, this would be a value bigger than 171. So 11 is the value to use. How could you calculate that? Well, um, We could simply do the, uh, the division. So I could say, well, this is 1933 divided by 171. And then we get 11 and uh, something. So that tells us that uh, 171 can be subtracted 11 times from 1933. And then we have a remainder left. So if you don't know another way to find this 11, just do the division and look at the value before the, the, the dot. Okay, and then, yeah, you can simply calculate this. So you do 11 times 171 and subtract that from 1933. Then you get uh, 52. That's the first step in the algorithm. Then, um, as you know from the Euclid, uh, the greatest common divisor of these two, 1933 and 171, 
is going to be the same as the greatest common divisor of these two, 171 and 52. But that's how the Euclid algorithm works. So if you would look only at this part here, uh, this is uh, doing the normal Euclid, but we are going to do some extra steps. Uh, what we are also going to do in the last column is uh, write this value 52 as some combination of 171 and 1933. We don't know yet the coefficients, so they are denoted here by the dots, but um, they are quite easy to calculate because how did we get this 52? Uh, you can see it here, 52 is 1933 minus 11 times 171. So we take this value here, this is 1933, and subtract 11 times this value. That will give us 52. Uh, subtracting 11 times this value, we do that one by one. So first we look at this part. And then we say, well, uh, it's uh, uh, this minus 11 times this. Well, it's quite easy because there's a zero here, so we don't have to take that into account. Minus 11 times 1 is minus 11. So we multiply this part with minus 11. In a similar way we find this, so we, we look at uh, these two terms, and then we say, well, uh, we have to do the first one minus 11 times the second one. So it's 1 minus 11 times uh, 0. Also easy. This part is 0. So that's going to be 1. So it's 1 times this minus 11 times this gives us this 1. So now we have uh, succeeded in writing 52 as a combination of these two. I know it's actually the same as what we have here. So this seems to be a very uh, complicated way to write what something that we already had. But in the following steps, there will be differences. Okay, then we go to the next uh, part. Um, first we do the normal Euclid step, uh, which means we have these two values left. Uh, we have to find the greatest common divisor of these two. Um, then we have to check how often can we subtract 52 from 171. We can do that three times. The, and then we can calculate the remainder. 171 minus 3 times 52 is going to be 15. So that means normal Euclid, uh, the greatest common divisor of these two values, 171 and 52, is the same as the greatest common divisor of uh, 52 and 15. That's in the Euclid. So this part on the left is the normal Euclid. Then we go to our extra column. And what we want to try now is write this new value 15, again as a combination of 171 and 1933. We don't know yet the coefficients, so we denote them with dots. But we do the same as what we did before. But what we know is 15 is 171 minus 3 times 52. So that's this 171 minus 3 times this. And again, we do that step by step. So first, for these two, 171, that is this part, minus 3 times this part. Um, so that's 1 minus 3 times minus 11. That gives us uh, 34. So I will write it out. Now what we do here is uh, 1 minus 3 times minus 11 and that is uh, 1 plus 33 and that is 34. That's how we get this value 34 over here. And same for the other step, then we do this 
minus three times this so that's going to be minus three so it's 34 times 171 minus three times 1933 um, how can you know that you are not making a mistake well, that's easy. You can, on a calculator, you can simply calculate this. Uh, on the calculator, do 34 times 171 minus 3 times 1933. And if you did it right, the result should be 15. If, uh, for example, you made a mistake and wrote a plus here instead of a minus, then you can immediately see that you did it wrong because if you do 34 times 171 plus 3 times 1933 that's going to be a value that's certainly bigger than 15 so that cannot be right but uh, yeah, in order to make sure that you made no mistake just calculate this on your calculator and check that it's really 15 um, next step we have to find the greatest common divisor of these two so we do the same we check how often can we subtract 15 from 52 again three times remain the seven so the greatest common divisor of these two is the same as uh, uh, greatest common divisor of 15 and 7 and in the extra column we again do the same we write 7 as a combination of 171 and 1933 using the fact that 7 is 52 minus 3 times 15 so now we have to calculate this minus three times this and we do that step by step so first this minus three times this and then this minus three times this so the first step will give us 113 check it maybe on a piece of paper uh, minus 11 minus 3 times 34 is minus 113 yeah. minus 3 times 34 is uh, minus 102 and then minus 11 gives us minus 113 um, yeah what's going to be the solution here that's easy to do uh, by heart I guess you did it now, uh, that's uh, going to be 10. 1 minus 3 times minus 3, so that's 1 plus 9, gives us uh, 10 here. And again, check it on your calculator that uh, if you do this calculation, uh, it's giving us 7. We're not done yet, uh, we go further with the next uh, line. Um, 15 and 7, how often can I subtract 7 from 15? Two times, remain the 1. Uh, this one here tells us that we are now finished. Because now we are, have the greatest common divisor of 7 and 1, which is, of course is 1. Uh, so in the last line here, uh, we have to write 1 as um, a combination of 171 and 1933. And how do we do that? Well, we do 15 minus 2 times 7. So we do 15 minus 2 times 7. Again, step by step. So we do this minus 2 times that. And we do this minus 2 times that. Uh, what's the first term? Well, try it for yourself first. And then um, it's going to be quite a big number. It's Minus 2 times this is going to be a positive positive number, 226. Plus this 34 is uh, 260. And then here, minus 3, minus 2 times 10, minus 23. Check it, do this calculation, minus this, it should be 1. Well, now we are done with this um, Blankenship algorithm. Uh, yeah, you could do this last uh, step, which is giving us a zero, and then yeah, use that as a sign that we can stop. 
So what did we find? Uh, especially important is this last line here. We found our, our result is that we can write 1 as a combination of 171 and 933 with the coefficients 260 and minus 23. So this is our uh, conclusion. That's what we are, our result, or the reason that we did it. Uh, why is this useful? Well, remember that we are working modulo 1933. Uh, that means that uh, this part, minus 23 times 1933, if we are working modulo 1933, then uh, this part is going to be zero. This is congruent to zero. Um, yeah, so first we add this modulo and then we can simply remove this part. The working modulo 1933, this part is uh, congruent to zero. So then we have this result. 260 times 171 is congruent to one modulo 1933. And then we are done because we were looking for an inverse of 171. And as, uh, you can see it's still here. Our goal is find an inverse of 171. We found it because we found the value that if you multiply it with 171, we get 1. Then automatically this value is the inverse. Uh, 260 here is the inverse of 171. You can also say that 171 is the inverse of 260. They are each other's inverse. But that's not what we were looking for. We were looking for the inverse of 171. So that is uh, 260 which yeah, solves our problem. The problem was find the inverse of 171. We found it, it's 260. So when you are done with the Blankenship algorithm, and this was the last step, then uh, actually what you can say is that this part here, that the coefficient of 171, that is the inverse that we were looking for. Okay, I hope it helped to uh, go through this um, example step by step. Um, you can find uh, other examples. Oh, yeah, another thing I want to mention is that uh, if you want to uh, check it, your result, if you want to make sure that uh, the answer you get, 260, is uh, right, then uh, we can uh, simply uh, check that there are sites and one of them is Wolfram Alpha Wolfram is the name of a person who set up uh, this site and here we can just enter this um, formula so we were looking for the inverse of 171 171 to the power minus 1 Modulo 1933, and indeed we get the result uh, 260. So this is your final check that you did it uh, right. Um, if you want to practice this, it's very easy. Just um, make up uh, two numbers, like here 171 and 1933. Uh, first, check that they have uh, a greatest common divisor of 1. And that can also be done here. You can just type GCD 171,1933. And there you see the greatest common divisor is 1. Then you know that 171 must have an inverse, modulo 1933. So then you can just uh, do the uh, algorithm as we uh, saw before. Um, of course, on the exam, you will not have access to this website, but when you are practicing, you can use it. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention.